Hello, hello, and welcome to the uh, second session, of the third session of the afternoon, I think. It's uh, 5 p.m. where I am in the world. My name is uh, Robin Tyndall. I'm coming to you from Cape Town in South Africa, and uh, I'm the host for today. I'm sitting here with, uh, with Malou and uh, Malou de Huan, and uh, she works at Drop Solid. So many of the, of the folk at Drop Solid have been contributing to this Morticon, so a big thank you to Drop Solid. And Malou, I think this is your second, uh, your second chat this morning uh, today as well. So thank you for, for contributing and making this Morticon a success. And uh, you're going to be chatting us today about scaling and optimizing Mortic, a marketing and a sales point of view, which is going to be really exciting. Uh, a little bit of background about you. You're the sales manager. Uh, I don't know why I'm talking to you. You know this. But uh, to everyone else out there who hasn't met Manu, she's a sales manager for Drop Solid, and she's working with their digital experience platform. And her goal is to help companies create an optimal digital experience for their stakeholder employees. This is going to be a pre-recorded session, but as you can tell, we do have Manu here live and well and kicking, and she will be here after her presentation to answer questions. And I think she has Jasper in the background as well to assist with that. I think they work as a team. So uh, that's enough from me. Milo, would you like to introduce uh, the video or should we just jump straight in? Over to you. I propose to jump straight in. Um, thanks for being here and for the introduction, Robin. I hope you enjoy uh, the session. And afterwards, uh, I'm more than happy to answer uh, questions. Fantastic. All right. Let me find your presentation here and push play. It takes a little while to go live, but uh, I'm pushing play now. And uh, we'll see you on the other side. Yes. Hello everyone, thanks for joining our session today. We are going to talk about scaling and optimizing Motic from a marketing and sales point of view. Yes, so I am Lou. I'm responsible for the sales uh, within Rob Solid um, from our product. And I'm Tony Hist, uh, I'm the marketing automation specialist at Drop Solid. Yes. So let me tell you a little bit more before we start. Um, of Drop Solid. So Drop Solid exists for 10 years now. We are active um, globally. Uh, we have different partners across uh, different continents um, with our um, Drop Solid Experience Cloud products, where we have different components like um, the content management, where we um, have Drupal uh, and Drupal Cloud products, um, where we have marketing automation. We are using, of course, uh, Multic for that part. And we have a customer data platform for um, being able to personalize content on um, different channels. Um, today, we want to talk to you about two different cases, three different cases on how we as RobSolid use marketing automation in different industries and for different clients of ours. The first case is a marketing as automation solution that we built for a Flemish government department. Let's start off by telling you some more about this specific department. Yes. Thanks, Toon, for the introduction. So the Flemish this Flemish government organization um, has more uh, than 15 different websites as a broad uh, ecosystem of um, digital channels, has more than 13 departments active with over 300 employees in total. Um, they have a lot of employees, uh, content um, editors who are working today in uh, Maltic as well as in Drupal, for distributing relevant content to their um, target groups. And of course, they are uh, active in, in, in multiple countries. Um, so in this case, more than 20 countries, they are active. In. So what is the challenge? Governments and public institutions want to start investing more into personalized digital experience because they want to offer added value to their clients, such as entrepreneurs and tourists. Organizations that succeed in connecting with their stakeholders, also through digital means, will receive benefits through, for example, higher engagements between stakeholders and organizations, which will transit, translate into higher service satisfaction. Our, our approach for this project is that we want to have a limit, uh, a, a modic setup with limited access for local mar marketeers or departments. So these departments can only access their own mail, forms, segments, reportings, and even contacts in the first phase. Um, and this is to avoid local marketeers to send emails to the wrong audience or updating deleting contacts that they don't own. Important to know is that there are different um, 
different roles within this modic setup. So we have the local departments, for example, the country of France and the country of Netherlands, but there must be an overall access by the product owner of this um, organization that can see all reporting and all contacts in the same instance. So Tone explained what our approach was. Um, he will continue um, telling you more in depth on what um, we achieved. But first, we want to highlight uh, which uh, return on investment we have created for the users, for the citizens in this specific case. So one really important thing is that um, we want a consistent and relevant communication through all channels um, because you are active with multiple uh, content editors, with multiple marketeers. Uh, we want to have the same tone of voice um, which they have to their target audiences. Um, but also we want to increase increase the engagement um, of their target markets. But that, of course, we can only achieve if we have a cons cons um, consistent and relevant communication. Um, one um, thing they also want to see, because they are with that many active in the in their digital ecosystem, they want to increase the efficiency and the productivity of their uh, people working uh, in their different um, tools, um, and specific also in marketing automation, as they can uh, automate a lot of processes they did before manually. Um, <clears throat> what was also a, a great benefit they had is that because they had more insights through uh, tracking and reporting, they can uh, or they were able to make a data -driven, uh, data driven decisions, uh, which led, of course, to a um, better insight and a better um, case they can bring as well to, for example, their management uh, to say, okay, these are the steps we are taking and this is the, the, the direction we want to go because of the insights they had. Um, and of course, last but not least, um, because of the improved collaboration between all different departments, um, we saw the employee satisfaction uh, went went up, um, and also the use and the um, touch points with the citizens, for example, um, was was much smoother. Um, the positive was the feedback was more more positive, and that's why also um, we see not only the employee satisfaction but also the expectations of the citizens um, were fully met in this case. So. Yes. Um, okay. So let's dive a bit deeper into our approach. Um, we have the first step for this project, and I think it's for all, all projects, is our kickoff meeting, where we discuss the migration from their current platform, the needs of the clients, and gave some inspiration. This meeting was really important to see that the expectations from the clients and also from our side were clear. Next up, we did a workshop with the client where we discussed their email strategy and we started to shape a certain plan of attack. And then we had a second workshop where we went a bit more deeper into the usage of Mautic, looking at the data model they wanted to use, um, different templates that were needed, how we will set up roles, um, how we will um, will organize trainings, and last but not least, also how do we set up a good double opt-in um, campaign. Because we're in the Euro European Union, so GDPR is really important um, for this client. Uh, and the final step was to present the plan of attack and the detailed planning, uh, and then to go over to um, yeah, the project itself. An example of the, the detailed planning can be seen here. Um, it's important to know that because this was such a big client and there were multiple departments, it was not possible um, to do every migration at once. So we did like a more step-by-step -step approach by um, started to set up, for example, the first three departments like France, Australia and Austria. Um, and then we went on um, along the way. And in one month, we did the whole setup and migration here. So and you can also see we gave training to every department along the way. Um, so everyone was quite satisfied. Another thing that we um, learned in the meetings is that we would, would need to do some custom development, uh, especially for the preference center, but I will go a bit more into the detail of that. Um, we also trained the clients in small groups of five. We thought this was really important because the users really need to start using the tool immediately and having like a big training with 30 people that doesn't give much room for questions or um, concerns in general. Um, we created briefings for different departments and created manuals, so everything that was expected from them was clear. Um, we created different email te 
templates and had a migration checklist to make sure no one forget, forgot anything in their previous platforms. So let's dive a bit deeper in the, in the setup. Um, our initial setup during testing, um, the purpose uh, of this setup was to have limited access for local marketeers to only see their own emails, own forms, own segments, reporting, and in particular, their own contacts. So we had two types of role, an admin who has um, access to everything but the API and plugins. So they can see the different contacts and emails and forms um, in an overview of all the departments and the department owner as a second role who had access there to their own contents like emails, contacts, and everything for that. Um, this is how we set up the roles. So as you can see, Matic gives you the option to see, uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, to select view own, edit own, create and delete own. Um, so we only selected these ones for the department owners. Okay, thanks Toon for explaining the approach we did. Let's dive a bit deeper in the, in the setup. Yes, perfect. Um, so uh, our initial setup during testing was the following. So the purpose of the setup was to have limited access for local marketeers to only access their own emails, forums, segments, reporting, and particular income and their own contacts. So we had two types of role. First one being the administrator. They had access to every contact form or email, um, but they just didn't have access to, to the API, the plugins, uh, and user permissions in general but they were able to see the different email statistics and contacts of other departments uh, in an overview. The second role was the department owner. They were able to see their own emails, own forms, and just own content types and contacts in general. Um, we did this because Motic allowed us to do this. So as you can see, when we did the setup of the different roles, you can select view own, edit own, create, and delete own, which allowed the user to only view their own contacts or content types. Next to that, um, through the meetings, we also saw that we would have to do a little bit of custom work for the preference center um, because there was no options to link certain segments to certain preference centers. For example, um, Department of Spain has, one, has the following segments, one, two, and three, and the Department of France has segment four, five, and six. So um, in the current out-of-the-box setup of Matic, segment one through six are shown in the preference center of the Department of Spain, which is not, um, which was not allowed for this client because the preference of Spain are not relevant for France, for example. So we created something that we called sub-preference centers. And what these do is they allow you to create different um, preference center, but you get the extra option to add a new segment to a specific so preference center. So as you can see, we um, set the option available in preference center to yes, and we could choose the different sub preference center here. So France could say, okay, these segments need to be shown in this preference center. Um, and that's why that problem was already solved. And then we started testing our initial ID and initial setup. Um, we wrote a few test cases, like for example, um, as a department, I want to create a contact manually, um, or I only want to see my own segments as a department, um, and we did something like 60 test cases in total, but the results were not that positive. Um, as you can see, um, like 47% of our test cases have failed, so that raised some red flags with us. Here are some of the more notable issues. For example, one being as a department, I want to see only my content in the calendar was not possible. A department could also not create a company manually. Um, a department could not clone a form. Um, and yes, yeah, some really big issues that would prevent the clients from working in an efficient way. And this was due to the way that the uh, contacts um, at the roles in Matic were being set up. So as I discussed, this was our um, initial setup. So contacts can only view their own content and edit their own content. Um, but yeah, this gave a lot of bugs. For example, when you wanted to clone a form as department owner, you get an error that you don't have access. Um, companies were just not visible at all. Um, yeah, landing pages are visible for every uh, department. So they were not separated, which is weird because in this role setup they were. Um, and the biggest problem, the unique identifier is not unique. 
Um, in Mautic, you can select one or more unique identifiers. Standard, it's the email, and this was also in this case, but it was really easy to override that and create multiple contacts with the same unique identifier. So yeah, that was quite a big problem, but luckily enough, this was just during our testing uh, period, so came up with a solution. So yeah, the solution, um, we knew that having limited access for local marketeers to their only their own context was not an option anymore. This was just not included in out-of-the-box Mautic. It was too big of an investment um, to create custom. So um, we created a bit of a change of mindset by asking some questions and going back to the start of the project. Like, is it really necessary to hide certain content? Or why is it necessary, to, necessary that we can't share contacts, for example? Or is giving an extra training not a solution for users to get a deeper understanding? So with this, with sharing content and contacts, it was also better for the further DXP vision. Um, and DXP vision might be a bit flu for some of you. So let me give you an example. Um, so as Milou said in the beginning, at Repsolt, we have our DXP, which consists of uh, a CMS, Drupal, marketing automation tool, Mautic, and also a personalization tool, um, which is our CDP. Um, and having shared content and contacts um, gives more information to our CDP. And more information to our CDP means that the client could use more personalization. For example, if Department A is responsible for tourist attractions in Flanders and Department B is responsible for biking routes in Flanders, how cool would, would it be then if Department B knows that client X is interested in bikes, Department A could also use the, this information to push push tourist attractions that are accessible by bike. So that's why we continue with this setup that the, the contact base of the clients is open and not hidden. And some um, of their content is also um, open to each other. And this setup actually works really well. The client is still actively using this platform every day to send newsletters, send press letters. Uh, they use multiple automated forms for assets and events. Um, they share multiple assets between different departments and they have a lot of automated campaigns at the moment. So we see the case is now uh, one and a half year um, active. They have uh, already more than 250,000 contacts in their uh, Mautic. Um, and we also see that in the last half year, um, we see an increase of uh, 85,000 contacts. Um, so it's increasing uh, rapidly. Um, what do we see also? They have uh, sent out uh, almost 2,000, um, 2 million uh, emails. Uh, and this is, of course, just the beginning. So this will increase and increase uh, in the upcoming months. Um, more than 11,000 assets were downloaded and more than uh, or almost uh, 14,000 uh, forms are submitted. Now let's go to the second case where we did a fully autonomous personalized email system with uh, Drupal and Mautic. Before we dive deeper in this case, I would like to give you some context about um, the client itself. Uh, so the client is Inagro, and Inagro is an institution active in the agriculture industry in Belgium. Yes, that's correct. Um, and to give you some idea, um, yeah, Inagro is active in Belgium, more specifically in West Flanders. And you may think like, oh, West Flanders in Belgium, that's probably really smart. But it's actually really big in agriculture and horticulture. For example, only in West Flanders, it provides 38,000 jobs. Uh, it has a turnover of 17 billion uh, euros. Um, and 30% of the yeah, meats and carrots and tomatoes, I don't know, everything. Um, vegetables. From vegetables, <laughs> indeed, um, that are distri distributed in Europe come from uh, our little province of West Flanders. Um, so more information about Inagro. They are active in everything that you can imagine for um, agriculture, like farming, mushrooms, um, aquaculture, open air, horticulture, insect farming, like everything that you can imagine, really. Um, and they have four um, yeah, different missions. The first one is a personalized newsletter. This is to inform their different um, yeah, different clients. Um, they also do a lot of demonstrations um, and trial field visits. They do organize workshops and lectures, and they publish articles um, that are yeah 
relevant for their readers. And this first part is where we came in. So um, what was the challenge exactly for Inagro? They had around 7,000 subscribers in the beginning of this project, and they posted more than 400 art articles per year. In total, they had di 30 different subjects. Um, for example, one subject could be uh, cows and another one could be carrots. But for the farmers, it was not relevant to see all these uh, different subjects. So yeah, they needed a way to create um, emails automatically because they had no time to do it manually, but the subscriber could only, uh, will, would only receive the information that is relevant to them. In this case, we see an increase of uh, the efficiency um, because they don't have to uh, create every mail manually. Um, it's a fully autonomous um, process that is that is going, uh, which also lead to a higher engagement of um, the employees, of course, but also um, the members in that uh, organization um, are more and more engaged because they're receiving more relevant information. Inaco is active in multiple domains, um, but of course, you don't want to receive information um, which is not necessary in your specific um, uh, tier. So that's why um, this brought a lot of value to Inaco. Um, yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, and for this solution, um, we use two technologies. The first one being Drupal, because Drupal loves content, and the second one being Matic, because Matic loves email, as we all know. Um, why did you, we use Matic? First of all, um, the email editing experience. Um, yeah, the content editors absolutely love this feature, and it is really easy for them to create um, emails. Um, most of the emails get created uh, automatically, but there are some uh, yeah, some moments that they do it manually, for example, invitations for different events. Um, also, a second uh, feature that they really loved was the email analy analytics. You get a really clear um, analytics. They can see how well their, email perform, uh, their emails perform and everything. Um, the automation part of Matic, also a really big deal. They mostly use this for events that per people get an, an invitation, an automatic follow-up email, and a thank you email. This also saves a lot of time for the people at Inagro. One of the more important reasons why Inagro chose for Matic was because of its open API. Um, we needed to create a custom solution um, where we could um, take the Drupal content and send it via an API to Mautic. And because Mautic has and supports an open API, this was perfect for it. Next to that, uh, the Mautic paragraph was also really important. Um, Inagro creates a lot of forms in Mautic and they needed an easy way to place these forms on their Drupal website. And this uh, module yeah, made sure that was possible. Um, the out of the box uh, integration between Dynamic CRM and Mautic was also a really important one for them. So their um, CRM, Dynamics contacts were available in Mautic, um, as you can see here. Now let's dive a bit deeper into the custom part that we've created here. Most of the technical difficulties were um, yeah, not created in Drupal, but we used Drupal to create this solution. Um, the first th thing that we did was uh, created an automatic campaign creation um, in Drupal. So what this does is, um, campaigns and Drupal get created every week. Um, and this campaign knows, okay, uh, I need to send over the content from, uh, for example, the 8th of the month until the 13th of the month for the next upcoming email. Um, these campaigns were also linked to a campaign in Mautic. So Mautic also knows which campaign to look at and you will later see how the content gets sent over. Um, and as you can see here, it creates an overview of different campaigns because they got automatically generated over time for each week um, of the year. Um, and the second thing here is that um, each campaign that gets created in Drupal also gets automatically created in Mautic and they are linked to each other uh, directly. Um, next to that, uh, because we told you there were different, um, yeah, interests that a farmer could have, such as carrots or tomatoes. Uh, taxonomy terms in Drupal were also linked to segments in Mautic. So um, when I would create a taxonomy term, for example, tomatoes in Drupal, it would also automatically create a segment in Mautic where the correct uh, contacts would appear in. 
and then maybe for the most important part, the tokens. Um, this is how we uh, insert the personalized contacts. Uh, content. So as you can see, we have a token for personalized events, general news and personal news. And these were the tokens where uh, that generated different contact uh, content through HTML. Um, and we use this for quite some while now. I think it's been live for two um, years almost. Uh, and we've used it to send out 7,500 unique personalized and fully automated newsletters each week. But it's also, and here is an example of how it will look. So the token will generate HTML content and will be displayed in the email. So, uh, since it's been live for two years, we also added some updates to this plugin. The first one being um, we added events. So now it's possible to automatically add different events. And an event will get added if it's uh, within two weeks of the, yeah, the due date or the date that the event is actually happening. Next to that, um, we made it possible for the customer to change the campaign start date. This was fixed before, but yeah, it's a small feature update. And one of the more important ones, not everyone gets an email now. In the beginning, um, everyone just received an email because the content editors were um, obligated to add some general news that was relevant for everyone. Now that's changed. If there's no interesting content for you this week, you won't receive an email. Um, so yeah, I think these were the most important um, updates. The client is still using this feature till this day and it's saved them a lot of work uh, and it yeah, makes it able for them to send really personalized contacts, uh, emails to the, all of their contacts. Indeed. And uh, we got also the feedback from the members in their organization and that's very useful that they just received a more relevant and personalized content um, in, in the past, it was a lot of content which was shared, but a bit of too much content, uh, which of course led to not reading uh, emails, for example, or just skip them because they weren't that relevant for them. But now um, we see the open rates of mails is going up. Um, so it's a, it's a great result. Yes. Um, and what's also really cool about this feature is that it's has also something to do with our last case. Um, in our last case, we will um, talk about how we created a fully autonomous personalized email system for the automotive industry. The title might sound familiar, um, but the, what was important for this case is uh, that an automotive dealer wants to inform the clients about certain cars that will be for sale soon. So they want to be able to send updates based on the preference of the users. For example, I want to receive an update when a BMW, BMW Type X3 um, comes up for sale, an Audi A6 and a Tesla Model 3, for example. As you can see, this use case is fairly similar to the use case of Vinagro because we want to send personalized emails based on the interest of the contact. Um, so the focus here was reusability. We wanted to reuse the Inagro Drupal content plugin, and this is exactly what we did, what we are doing, because this is a project that is still work in progress. But as you can see here, this is an example of how it will look like. At the moment, we're in the testing phase of this project, but it, we believe that it will go live very soon. Um, and we are happy that we can create a re reusable plugin um, that will be relevant for multiple clients in the future also. Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you very much for joining our session. We hope it was very um, interesting uh, we, that you picked up a lot of ideas. Um, if there are questions, please reach out to uh, me or to Tone. Um, yeah, and hope to see you soon. Uh, all. Yes, thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Fantastic, thank you very much. I feel like I would want an entire day for each one of those case studies that you did and just ask a thousand questions. I think I've, I think I've, this is probably a good thing, but I think I've come out of that session with more questions uh, than I went in with because you, you, thinking outside the box and, and using the flexibility of more was obvious there. The question is how, as a marketer, not a developer, I'm curious, well, how, how did you, how did you do that? How did you do the sub segments, you know, modifying the preference center, et cetera, et cetera. I suppose that is the benefit of working at Drop Solid, where you've got a, a, a larger team, you have developers and such like to give you that flexibility, or is that something that you guys were handling yourselves? No, correct. Uh, within Drop Solid, we have um, a few 
teams. Uh, so, for example, we have a team of strategists who are helping out, um, get to know the business case of the clients, um, get to know the visitors, doing interviews. So you're really going on a deep level to get a clear and good uh, solution for them. Uh, and I think that's maybe the difference. So we don't look um, only at a technical perspective, but also on the, on the strategic side uh, and on the user pr perspective. Um, some of us caught your, your lightning talk earlier this morning, and uh, there's actually a question related to that. Let me bring it up on stage. There it is uh, from Rahul. Uh, you, you, there was a plugin you mentioned this morning. Yep. Was that, did we see that in use here? Uh, correct, indeed. Uh, it's the same uh, plugin um, that we've, uh, yeah, we've showed this morning. Um, but as also told this morning, uh, we did it on multiple sites. So Inago was the first case we did. Um, we are now working with a um, person uh, active in the automotive industry um, and we're rolling out that as well. Um, but this morning was more from uh, how to create a first uh, multi plugin uh, with, uh, with uh, my colleague Jasper, Jasper de Barre. Um, so, yeah. Um. So, so the, the, a lot of what we spoke about, you, you, you talked to us through there, was very client-client specific, and there was a lot to go on. Um, but I, I, what, what piqued my interest was, um, I think particularly, I think with the Flemish um, department that you're working with, you, you mentioned training a couple of times. And as someone myself who, who works with Mortec and is experienced with Mortec and gets frustrated with Mortec as an experienced user, how do you guys go about training non-technical people who perhaps have very little concept of marketing automation because you're, you're especially in a government department, I would imagine. What were your biggest challenges in training people to use Mortic? Um, yeah. And it, um, so, uh, for example, in governmental organizations, we see that there are, are a lot of um, different departments active uh, and you will all want them getting on board on the marketing automation. So what we typically do is make a plan to go step by step and help them for example, with setting up the first campaign together, um, that they are up and running and that they have a first uh, experience in using um, Mautic. And then we see that it's the step um, or the barrier is a bit lower to log in again and creating campaigns if they already did it before. So we are going step by step. And of course, we, will, we always split the different uh, departments because it's hard that if you're in a group of of 10, 20, 30 people, um, a generic session, um, that's quite hard. So that's why we prefer a bit smaller groups um, that we can go uh, and give them personal guidance um, on topics they are uh, relevant for them. So, yeah. Did you, is each person behind their own computer logged in on their own user accounts when you're doing the training? Yes, we try to. Um, of course, m most of the time we start with a more generic and then um, everyone logs in and step by step, they are uh, going together with us um, in the training. And with, with all that pre-work you do with, with these clients, the preparation, the strategy and such like, are these Mortex pretty are pre-populated with pre-built campaigns that you're showing them? Or are you letting them create their own campaigns uh, or a mix of the two? Um, we try to inspire them with some use cases that uh, could be relevant, for example, to create a specific campaign, um, but we don't work with predefined um, campaigns. But we do want to give them ideas on what kind of campaigns can you set up, of course. Yeah. You, you mentioned, um, I think for an agro, you mentioned that there were, in most often, most often the emails were being created automatically. Does that, do you mean that from scratch or do you mean that you, you were setting up a template and using dynamic content to populate those, 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 those emails? Indeed, it's with the dynamic content. So there is a template. Um, for example, the header and footer are fixed, uh, but the content between the header and footer and there's dynamic content uh, coming from, uh, for example, a, a, a CMS system that's pushed to the yeah, newsletter. Okay. And are you using tags or segment membership to determine well, what filters are you using to serve up that dynamic content? With Mortec, we've got a couple of options there. Um, I, I'm, I'm I, a picking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm Jasper. Um, uh, so yeah, I was also in the... In the More the, technical yeah, colleague of the, mine. Yeah. yeah, the session this morning. Uh, and I'm also uh, the, 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 yeah, one of the, the owners of, of 
uh, in Agro, and uh, we use uh, we use segments uh, to categorize the uh, the people in uh, in the right in the right way, so that they received relevant content based on their segment. Um, but like the newsletter is sent out to everyone, for example, and then based on on yeah the, their tags, and then with the tags they are put in the segments. They are uh, they receive their own uh, their their personalized uh, newsletter, um, but it's the same newsletter. It's the same template that's sent over to them. Um, but in Agro, they also have manual uh, emails that they send out, and then they can uh, filter on the segments. Um, so only send an email to a certain uh, certain segment, for example. And were you using the legacy builder there? I see in your screen grabs it wasn't the Grape JS builder. Yeah, it was the it was uh, the legacy builder. Yes. Uh, is that still the case, and why? Uh, it's still the case uh, because we want we 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 wanted to make uh, to make sure that everything uh, worked fine, and we didn't get around yet to to switch. Uh, indeed. <laughs> There's, I'm, uh, these questions are all coming from me because I'm genuinely fascinated. Thank I'm you. keeping an eye on the Q&A and hopefully I'm not uh, overriding anyone else who wants to ask a question. Please throw it out there on the Q&A if you've got one and we can put it to the guys. Uh, but one last question for myself while waiting for anyone else to, uh, to chip in here. Um, across the board, when you're doing these large scale Mortic um, projects and there's training involved, um, you can see I'm fascinated with training. What is, what is generally the, the, what do people enjoy most about working with Mortec, and I'm talking the 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 the, the user, where the you know people at the call face using the using Mortec every day, who aren't ex, who aren't marketers, who aren't marketing automation. What what do they enjoy most that you that you get repeat back on? And and contrary to that, what do they get frustrated with most with Mortec? I think if if questions aren't being answered soon uh, in their process of or of their learning curve, and then it can quickly become a frustration um, if they facing different um, issues or different things they don't know how to tackle, and then it can become quickly an, an, um, an, an, a pain in the ass for them. Um, but if you can guide them and set them up right away, um, then we see that they enjoy creating those campaigns. Think along, uh, speak with colleagues, um, speak with, for example, um, some um, end users of them or end customers of them to say, okay, what do you expect? Um, and that they are they are happy with. Uh, but it can be a frustration in the beginning yeah, if, if you get stuck on something. It, it's a very steep learning curve. Uh, we we yeah we see that all the time with with yes, a lot of our clients. Um, but we see in the end once they. They see how it works and they, they get familiar with it that they, they experiment themselves. Um, uh, example is for uh, the emails that they send out. Yeah, we, we make one template most of the times uh, and we see after a few weeks or months, they start making their own adaptations and they, they, they start from there and then they build further on that. Uh, and we see from the response that we get from the clients that they that they really yeah, enjoy it uh, that way so that yeah, they, they feel like they made it themselves um, with the help we, we, we gave them. Uh, that's really, yeah, it's nice to see uh, and hear from them. Yeah, they have, they have a sense of ownership and pride in something that they've created. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Well, guys, that was absolutely fascinating. As I say, I wish I could spend more time with you guys to actually unpack each one of those. I think there was a lot, a lot more going on there than, uh, than uh, we only got a glimpse of it. But thank you very, very much. Uh, I think we'll wrap that up there if there's not any, any, any questions. And um, yeah, that was, that was absolutely fascinating. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, I think the next session we have is with Matthias as well. So if you're in the session now, hang on for that one. It's coming up in about 20 minutes. Uh, I know Matthias, it's a fascinating one on deploying more text and WordPress installations based on templates. It's a fascinating one. You want to stick around for that. And Milo and Jasper, thank you so much for spending yes. your time with us. And uh, we'll see you next time. for being a fantastic host of our, uh, of our session. At my pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.